Today it's time for a little house repair. I'm changing the power outlet on the front porch. And once I realized there was a problem, I saw I needed it badly. I had my electric drill out here to do something. And I plugged it in over here at the outlet. This is the old outlet. I plugged it in and the drill worked. <clears throat> then I moved the drill a little bit and it, I pressed the, the trigger again and it didn't work. And I wiggled the power plug at this end and it worked again. I said, oh, we must have a loose wire in there somewhere. You better get on that. So I did. I pulled the outlet out and I looked at it and they had some old armor cable back in there with the uh, twist connectors this is the armor cable ring I took off with twist connectors connecting these wires to the armor cable now the first problem was these wires came out just like this they weren't twisted around each other or anything and the second problem was the idiot who put this in used these holes in the back of the outlet where you just push the bare wire in and that's it. They didn't use the screws in the side which provide a much more solid connection. So multiple points of failure. I took it all apart. I had to get a hammer and screwdriver and break pieces out to get it all apart. And once I did, I found a problem. I went downstairs. I'll show you that in a bit. I went downstairs. I found out where the cable went. I traced the cable from the circuit breaker to here. And I saw where it's Romex cable, then a few feet of armor cable inside the wall, and then this. And once I got this all apart, I put a piece of orange uh, leveling construction string on it. And I pulled the old cable down through the wall. Then I connected the orange string to the new Romex, pushed it up as far as I could, and then pulled it back through with the string and it was very easy to do. It almost couldn't have been better. And here's the new GFCI outlet. It's a standard 515 NEMA, 15 amp. Because even though this Romex is 12 gauge, it's yellow, there is white 14 gauge wire in the circuit. So you gotta keep it down to a 15 amp outlet. And this one does not even have the holes on the back where you can plug in wires straight to it like this because that is stupid. You have to use the screw connectors and that's the only way I would do it anyhow. So, once I got everything all chopped out of here and pulled the metal box out of the wall and got the wire run, I glued it back in with a clear sealer which has taken over two days to dry so far. I should have used RTV on it. It's still a little bit soft, but it's holding it well enough that I can go and put it all back together now. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to reassemble all this up here, then we'll go downstairs and reassemble it on that end, and then we're all fixed. And yes, the circuit breaker is shut off downstairs. And no, this wire isn't even connected downstairs yet. It's just a piece of wire hanging through the wall. And I made this piece of wire a lot longer than I needed. Because it's always easier to have more and cut it off and not use the whole thing than to not have enough to start with. Now, I'm not a professional electrician. I would consider myself an advanced amateur. And that I've done a lot of learning, reading, research, and work that I can do a lot of the work myself. But for really major jobs, I would still let uh, an electrician come in here and do the actual work. For those of you who don't know, for a standard 120 volt outlet, we have your black hot wire, white for neutral, and the bare wire for the ground. Uh, yes, you could use a wire stripping tool, but I don't have one. And for all the more often I do power work, I don't feel it's a good investment. 
So I just take a razor blade and cut around each wire, get the insulation. Just like that. Now on here it shows you, you have your hot side, which is the black. You have the neutral, which is the white, and the green screw for the ground. Okay, there's one wire all the way in and secure. Now those of you who think you know a lot about power and stuff would say yes, the wire should go on this side around in the direction of the screw tightening. Yes, well in the case of this one, there's a metal plate here under the screw so it doesn't matter. So man, I'm ahead of you on that one. Okay, all three wires, hot, neutral, and ground are hooked up on this end of it. Over time, I've changed just about every power outlet and light switch in the house because they were old, they weren't done right, and it gave me something to do. So I've had a bit of practice at this. Here's an example of mapping out the circuit breakers. For security purposes, I won't show the main floor of the house, but rather this is the top floor rental unit. And uh, there's a number and a color for each circuit breaker. And by going around the apartment with one breaker on, then another breaker on, only one at a time, you can figure out where is the power for each circuit breaker. I didn't get an idea of how the place is wired. And this is after I made some improvements. The purple became its own circuit, the blue became its own circuit, and the red became its own circuit. Before that, all of this whole side was all on one breaker, and they kept tripping off. And the previous owners told me they kept resetting it. Oh, but they never thought to actually fix it. When I got the place, I fixed it. I did it right. Now over here there are still a couple that could be a little better, but it's good enough the way it is. I gave the renters a copy of this map, so they would have an idea of what's going on if there's a problem. Now, once you have everything in place, electrical tape must be put on over it to cover and insulate the hot and the neutral especially. Okay, now this end is all wired and ready to go back in the box. I just have to carefully plan out and bend the wires so it can all go in there as neatly as possible with minimal trouble. See that? It all fits. Plenty of room. Nothing is touching 
anything I shouldn't be touching. And just to be sure, I'm going to go a little overkill on the tape. There's an area here where the hot wire could touch the metal box and rub through. So I'm going to give it a layer of protection from that. New outlet is in place. Wire it up, cover it, insulated, and set to go. Here's the junction box in the basement, and this is the old piece of armor cable that was going to that outlet. And this is all it had on the tip for two wires to connect with. They weren't twisted or bent or anything. They just shoved two straight ends into the wire nut, twisted it, and said, okay, it's fixed. No, it's not. It's barely touching anywhere, and it's a horrible connection. Luckily, I knew enough to fix it. I'm gonna pull this armor cable out of this junction box and put in this piece of 12 gauge Romex I've already run up through there and then we'll be all set but before I go too far now that I have the wires exposed up there I'm gonna use my multimeter to check one more time and make sure this circuit is completely dead so that I don't get zapped. Okay, we're good. I can take it apart and rebuild it. One of the things some people will do to save themselves a little bit of work and doing the job right. Now, when I got this house, I met the people who had it. And, you know, have you, have you ever met someone who you can see him for 30 seconds and know that you are dealing with a total idiot? Well, that's what these people were like. So, doesn't surprise me, but still... A bit disappointed that they would cheap out on so many things that are easy to do right. Okay, we have the old wire out. Let me take it over here in the light. Okay, we have the old wire out. Look at this stuff. They went to a lot of trouble to keep a really old piece of wire in the system to save a little bit of work. Luckily, I caught it before it became a problem. Okay, the new wire comes in through a plastic bushing. Everything's all wrapped up, taped up, and secured inside the box. And now, it's time to come over here and turn the breaker back on that operates it which would be this one we'll see if it stays on or kicks right back off ah, so far so good I've done a lot of rework in the breaker panels for this house since I got it a pair of Cutler Hammer CH panels a lot of stuff cleaned Replaced, reorganized. This 240 volt 50 amp powers the electric stove. 
This 30 amp powers electric dryer. This 50 amp powers my charging station for my Tesla outside. And this box powers the top floor rental apartment. This is for the basement and the main floor. Well, it seems to be working. I don't hear any sparks or anything. I'll go outside and test the GFCI.